a little story before I start. And first of all, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. You know, Andrew, Andrew mentioned that I turned my screen off so I could run downstairs. My commute is going up and down the staircase uh, to get an iced coffee because I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, usually between two and three thirty in the afternoon. I'm tired. I don't know. I think it's the it's the Spanish. Maybe it's the Spanish blood in me. Uh, but I take a siesta uh, usually during that time, so I'm kind of in siesta mode. Uh, I didn't yawn, Andrew, but uh, you know I needed that iced coffee to keep me going, and, I, and this this glass is particularly strong and kept me going. Um, I'm going to talk about some retailers uh, that have filed Chapter 11, and we're going to focus on retailers, but I am going to put a quickie in for LSC Communications, uh, which is a, uh, which, which is a, uh, a printing company um, and um, a, uh, does a lot of logistics. We'll talk about that quickly. Uh, J.C. Penney um, filed Chapter 11 May of 2020. I'll never forget. I was talking to a client, and they were we were talking about J.C. Penney's filing and when it was going to occur. Right in the middle of this two-hour conference call, they filed, and I had the opportunity to tell them they filed. See, we, the pool that you took in terms of when they were to file, you lost because uh, they just filed, and it was 5:30 uh, on a Friday evening. And this was May 15th. And uh, what's unusual about J.C. Penney? Well, what was usual is when they filed, they did what most retailers do who decide not to liquidate day one and talk about the potential for reorganization or restructuring the business. They uh, announced a lot of store closings, conducted going out of business sales at the store subject to closure, um, and had to decide whether they were going to keep the business and come out as a reorganized entity or sell the business. And uh, what they ended up doing, and particularly because of the pressure of their secured lenders, and we'll talk about them in a second, um, is they ended up selling their businesses. And they, they broke up the businesses between their retail uh, operating companies and the valuable leases. And it's so interesting because in Sears, this was done before two years, two, almost two and a half years before the filing. And uh, the, the Sears management spun off their valuable real properties uh, that is now the subject of a fraudulent transfer action. Here, the spinoff occurred in Chapter 11. Woohoo, that is the right way to go uh, because it is being done under the uh, supervision of a court. And so you ended up with uh, a credit bid uh, from a couple of landlords. And this is uh, actually a credit bid was from, this, was, was from the ad hoc group of first lead lenders. Uh, but a group of landlords joined in conjunction with them to buy, they essentially bought um, the operate the retail operation. And the critical uh, element of this was that the retail operation had to come out of chapter 11 before Christmas. That was critical. Without that, uh, you know, this, this thing was going to fail because bankruptcy and uh, Christmas just don't jive in terms of sales. Um, and what happened is this credit bid contemplated that the ad hoc first lien holders uh, would form a separate real estate trust and they would acquire 161 of the debtors' profitable real estate assets, uh, real property leases and, distri and owned distribution centers. And they would acquire the PropGo, they called it, the real property uh, and valuable leases, while uh, Simon Property and Brookfield, uh, the landlords, uh, would, would buy out the retail operation. Um, and Brookfield and Simon uh, paid about a billion seven. 750, 1.75 billion, um, which included uh, cash, new term loan debt. Um, and the credit bid uh, by the ad hoc first lead holders uh, was with respect uh, to the prop go assets. What's so interesting here, and this is not a phenomenon, a unique phenomenon, is you're having more and more cases with landlords like Simon and Brookfield. They're kind of made a paradigm out of this, buying retail operations. Why? Because they want to keep cash flow on their leases and their malls. They don't want to see empty stores. And it is in their economic interest to buy out these retailers, hopefully turn them around. That's going to be the key, their ability to turn them around um, and continue to have good tenants. Uh, interestingly, you have seen a lot of retailers close stores where landlords have been converting the use of the uh, of, of the stores stores for different uses. But here, um, it was uh, Simon and Brookfield decided they were better off at least acquiring the retail operation. What was so interesting was the dispute. It was a fight between different classes of secured lenders, and uh, that is that is really the big part of uh, of, of this case.